Hey guys, what's up? It's your buddy Keith, and I am here live again in the control room at Essex Recording Studios, just outside London in South End on Sea, England, baby. I've got one of the coolest guitars from one of my favorite brands ever here to share with you guys. You've never seen anything like this. Extremely rare. Um, very, very hard for us to get. We had to go all the way to Japan and get this. And very cool story behind it. Very cool features. If you are new to the channel, you better smash that like button, hit subscribe, and come join our circle of friends, guys. We're at uh, sitting just over 8,600 subscribers right now. We're on the race to 10,000. A lot of cool stuff happens with YouTube when you get 10,000 subscribers. So, tell everybody, go make some new accounts, subscribe, help us out. We really want to hit that 10K uh, by the end of this summer. So that's our goal. And I'm going to keep bringing you awesome instruments like this to uh, keep it interesting and help us hit that goal. All right. So first of all, look at this beautiful case. White with gold ESP logo. I've never seen an ESP case like this. You open it up and it has a very vintage 70s vibes with the uh, kind of tan shag carpet inside. Really, really cool. And straight off the bat, without knowing anything about this guitar, you look at it and what do you say? You say, man, this is a really, really cool take on a Gibson Firebird. Obviously a Firebird inspired design with reverse headstock. But like the more and more you look at this guitar, you say, my God, there's so many features on this that I've just never seen on any other ESP. And really it looks like no other guitar. So you kind of have some explorer vibes mixed with the thunderbird you've got this beautiful cutaway right here you've got great deep access here the spoke wheel truss rod adjustment tool there out of nowhere bill lawrence usa humbucker um you know made very very famous and popular by Dimebag, but with very cool vintage cream pickup rings and pickup cover there You've got this beautiful gold pick guard and uh, contrasting with, you know, chrome hardware here. It looks gorgeous. One volume knob, three-way toggle switch, all you need. Great. The body, the white, the gold, and the chrome all just really complement each other very, very well. You've got that traditional Gibson center section that's raised. Very, very nice. And the paint on this, it's like the natural wood. So you do have, I think, a thin layer of lacquer over this. But you also get the wood grain and the pores through it. It's just beautiful, guys. Very resonant guitar. Now, let's talk about why this is special and who came up with this design and why it's significant. Well... This is a guitar that belonged to Lita of a very well-known band called Baby Metal. He's been in a few other bands. Uh, Uni how, do you, how do I pronounce that? Is it Unidivide or, or Univide? Um, as well as this one. These are Japanese bands. I don't know how to pronounce it. Dalu? 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 I'm not sure. I'm not familiar with the other bands. I am familiar with Baby Metal because... I saw them open up for Red Hot Chili Peppers here in London. Very um, interesting combination of acts. And Red Hot Chili Peppers is famous for touring with unconventional openers. And, you know, in this day and age, I don't know if they had to buy onto the tour. For those of you that are unfamiliar, a lot of mega artists in this day and age, uh, when you go see them on tour, that, that opening act or all of the opening acts a lot of times actually pay a lot of money to be on that tour. They, you know, the, the, the established band treats it as a free commercial for them. And I mean, these buy-on fees can be six figures, can be a hundred grand, you know, and they hope to make it back on merch sales, uh, CD sales and, and, um, you know, or the next go around after they grow their fan base from playing in front of tens of thousands of people with a more established act. I don't know if Baby Metal did that or not. Um, I, I did think it was an odd pairing, but it was a great time. And if you haven't heard of Baby Metal, if you haven't seen them, 
it's uh it's very interesting it's i'd say it's it's kind of a half visual concert experience where you've got the girls who are in my opinion primarily they are the they are the show aspect of the band and then you have insanely talented metal players in the background that are just masters of their instruments i mean i think the bass player when i saw them was playing like an eight string bass it was crazy and all of them are known for being prolific masters of their instruments with the absolute coolest best of the best guitars basses etc and this is no exception this comes from esp's craft house this is their top custom shop where they make guitars specifically to go out to the artist they're one-off builds they are the best of the best the most expensive and as you can see here it's the cygnus model built in 2012 I don't know if that was February 12th or if that was December 2nd. I don't know how they do their month date format and I can't read Japanese. But regardless, 2012, there's photos with, with Lido with this uh, guitar that you can see on Google Images. It's signed by him on the back. But there's a lot of features that get even better. And if you think this looks super, super cool on the front, wait till we flip it over. And before we do... I'll just go over the side here. You can see it's got the illuminescent glow-in-the-dark uh, side markers. That should be mandatory on every guitar, in my opinion. It makes such a huge difference, especially if you're playing on a dark stage, playing in a dark bedroom at night, etc. It's great. Beautiful, beautiful rosewood fretboard with pearl dot markers. And I love this. The reverse headstock. Kind of... Fenderish vibes, but in my opinion, way cooler. Kind of have a fish hook, I call it. Uh, and the logo, beautiful. Look at this. ESP, Electric Sound Products, custom guitars. The Cygnus. And look at how the fretboard joins the headstock there. How interesting is that? And that, of course, no truss rod access there because we have the spoke wheel. Welcome to the 2020s. Now, when we flip it over, this is what I love. The neck on this is amazing, guys. Absolutely amazing. You've got a nice belly cut here. Again, good view of this cutaway at the bottom. Just a gorgeous piece of art. But the neck is what really does it for me. Look at all of the flaming all up and down this neck. This is top, top quality, guys. There's your ESP neck plate with some of my fingerprints. And you've got the S serial number, which is for the Sado Custom Shop, which is where they do all of the bolt-ons. So... And back in the day, Craft House on the very older guitars would have a, uh, you'd have Craft House or Technical House, and sometimes you'd get a CH or a TH uh, on the serial numbers here. Nowadays, all of the bolt ons, uh, whether it comes from the Craft House as an artist spec or not, uh, if it's a bolt on, it gets an S serial number. That's my understanding. Signature there, and you can see a lot of these vertical and, and cross grain wood here gives it a very cool kind of 3D effect on this one piece maple neck. One of the nicest necks, if not the nicest neck I've ever felt, and it's it's thick, it's chunky like a Les Paul neck, so not like a conventional ESP guys this is this is like a Gibson and it's better than a Gibson it's awesome when I saw this I said I have to have this absolute must for the tuners I actually haven't looked at them what is the brand they're five it says 510 I'm actually I've never seen these tuners before patent pending 510 
I'm not sure what the brand is, but they look like vintage Gibson style tuners. Wow. What a sexy guitar. So, go have a look on Google. You can Google Lita, Google his other bands. Very, very famous in Japan. He, he's even on the old uh, Instagram. Hasn't posted in a little while, but he's uh, Lita underscore Cygnus on Instagram. Love this case. Absolutely love it. We just posted this guitar on Instagram today. Um, and yeah, we'll just do a little once-over walk around on it. It's got a few little dings, as you would expect. You know, one there, one tiny one there. Um, some light pick marks that are hard to see. You have to get at the right angle on the uh, the pick guard. But overall, this thing is, you know, as close to mint as you're going to get. One little thing there. And if, if this is really picky to you, because this is like a natural white finish... Just get some white out. I don't know. I was here in the UK for eight years and I still don't know what they call white out over here. But little dab of white touch up and those will all go away and will look perfect. Me personally, it's like, hey, you know, if an artist had this, played it, used it, then there's nothing to uh, feel bad about. It's got signs that it was actually played and enjoyed to make epic music. So there we go. There's a there's a few little tiny things in the pores there. But uh yeah, overall absolutely stunning. The best of the best ESP Craft House. It uh it does not get better. Oh, look at that neck now that we're under the spotlight here. Woo! Okay, guys, goosebumps. Absolutely loving this. Cool. I got to get going because I have way more guitars to share with you guys. We're going to do a lot more videos over the weekend. I know it's been a little bit slow on the channel, but we've been redoing our website. We're opening up a monster rock venue next door, and there's just so much going on. Huge recording projects happening. Some stuff that's going to go out on massive international TV. Can't tell you about it right now, but you will be seeing it soon. So it's a uh, balancing act. You know, I try to get as much on the channel as often as possible. But with the pandemic and uh, everything that's been going on, it's, it's had to take a little bit of a back seat. But we will be back with a vengeance. And stay tuned. Stick around for more cool guitar videos. And don't be afraid to check out the playlists on the channel. We've got a big... ESP playlist where you can see lots of other rare and very interesting guitars. We just got another 80s ESP uh, Firebird that has the uh, Jackson Lawsuit headstock and a really cool seafoam green color. So do check that out, guys. All right. Thanks for hanging out. It's at Essex Recording Studios on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. If you want to buy this guitar, it is for sale. Go to the Reverb Essex Recording Studio shop. Just go to Reverb.com. You can type in ESP Cygnus, C-Y-G-N-U-S, or go to EssexRecordingStudios.com. It will be up there. It'll probably be on eBay this, this uh, weekend as well. We've got our new eBay shop open. And if you want to strike a deal directly, always get in touch. Either email EssexRecordingStudios at gmail.com or on a direct message, a DM on Facebook at the Essex Recording Studios page, or on our uh, Instagram. Probably, man, probably sell a few, one or two uh, guitars a week off of Instagram. It's been great, actually. Really looking forward to getting that uh, Instagram shop and Facebook shop up and going soon, too. We've got uh, the new website on Shopify, and they're really great. You, you put it there once, you press a button, and it goes out everywhere. Reverb, Facebook, Instagram, eBay, so... Things should be going a lot smoother here in the future. Cool. Thanks, guys. Uh, I miss you. I'll see you soon. And uh, take care. Enjoy the weekend. Bye.